Hi, and welcome to Lesson 3.5, Justifying Conclusions. So, in the last lesson's notes, we briefly looked at that idea of a two-column proof. Now, in this lesson, we are finally going to dive into the idea of proofs and supporting your conclusions or statements with justification. So, a proof can be defined as a sequence of justified conclusions, or sometimes this conclusions is called statements. So, a sequence of justified conclusions, or our statements, that are starting with the antecedent, or our hypothesis, and ending with the consequent, or our conclusion from that statement. So, the overall conclusion, starting with the hypothesis, and working our way to the conclusion. <clears throat> so, we're going to look at that process in example one. So, example one gives us a given statement and a statement to prove. So, what we want to do is we start with the given information, and we work our way through with justified statements or justified conclusions, starting with our hypothesis, which is always our given, and then we are going to work our way toward our overall conclusion or the prove statement. So you start with the given, and each step along the way, you're justifying your conclusion or reasoning, working toward the prove statement. So in a proof, your conclusions, in a two-column proof, I should say, your conclusions on the left are your statements that are your general statements, your mathematics that you work out, such as algebra, and data. On the right, your justifications are the reasons to support these statements on the left. So whatever statement you make on the left goes with support on the right. And that support, your justifications, include definitions, theorems, postulates, or properties. So these four things make up your justifications or reasons that support your general conclusions or statements on the left. So let's look at this proof setup for the given and the prove here. So you always begin with your given information. And in a two-column proof, you number your steps along the way, and you number the corresponding justification on the right. So, we always begin with the given. So, our given equation, 4x minus 12 equals 10, and the justification for that, or the reason, is it was given. So, whatever is given, we can assume is true. Now, what we want to do each step along the way is work toward the prove statement. So, what they want us to do is prove that given this equation, x equals 5.5. So the way that we prove that, in this case, is by doing the algebra, or solving for the variable. So our next conclusion, or statement, would be 4x equals 22. What we ended up doing was add 12 to each side, so we used the additive property of equality. So what we want to do is justify what allowed us to go from the first conclusion to the second. And what allowed us to do that was the additive property of equality. And then third, <clears throat> we went from 4x equals 22 to making the conclusion that x equals 5.5. What allowed us to do that was by dividing both sides by 4x, or dividing both sides by 4, not x, which would be technically 
division property of equality, or more specifically, we would call that not division, but we would call that the multiplication property of equality because division is the inverse operation of multiplication. Although, quite honestly, if you write subtraction property of equality, if you were subtracting or additive property, I'd be fine with that. Same with multiplication or division. So let's look at one where it's not necessarily algebraic. So example two gave us this information. P and Q are points on a circle with the center O. Prove that the distance OP is equal to the distance OQ. So if we look at the diagram over here, and if they don't draw, or if they don't provide you with the diagram, I would always recommend before beginning a proof to draw out the situation if possible. So given P and Q are points on a circle with center O, so we have circle center O, points P and Q are on there, somewhere random. We're proving that the distance from OP is equal to the distance from OQ. <clears throat> so in this case, we can have a rather short proof in some cases. Ones that are three steps or two steps, four steps, even five steps are generally considered pretty short proofs. Anything over that is more typical of your general proofs or longer proofs. So in example two, we start with our given statement that points P and Q are on circle O with center of O. That was our given. And we simply can go right to our proof statement that OP is equal to OQ or QO because the definition of a circle is a set of points in a given plane that are a given distance, meaning the same distance from the center. So all the points on the circle, by definition, are the same distance from the center point. <clears throat> and then example three. It says, if you know the measure of angle ABC is 46, what is the justification for the conclusion that angle ABC is acute? <clears throat> so our justification for that conclusion that ABC is an acute angle would be the definition of acute angles. And remember, for justifications, you can use definitions, theorems, postulates, or properties. But the definition of an acute angle is any angle whose measure is 90 degrees or less than 90 degrees and greater than zero degrees. And because the measure of angle 46 or ABC was 46, we know by that definition it's an acute angle. And then our fourth example says, given the figure at the right, prove the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is 180 degrees. So right away, I know if I'm looking at that diagram and adding angles one and two, that reminds me of a definition of a linear pair or dealing with linear pairs, which also means I'm dealing with supplementary angles. So just knowing the information that I possibly would have to deal with linear pairs or supplementary angles should just keep that in the back of your head as you're working through your proof dealing with your justifications. So first we want to take that angle one and angle two form a linear pair. And if you look at that, well, all it said was we were given the figure at the right. But in that image, we can see that angle one and two form line M. So if it's given to us in the image and we can assume it, then we can use that as our given statement. So angle one and angle two form a linear pair that was given information in the image. Then we know that angle one and angle two 
are supplementary angles. The way that we can state that conclusion is because the linear pair theorem has a piece that says any linear pair form supplementary angles. So the linear pair theorem allows us to say angle 1 and 2 are supplementary angles. And then we can say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180 degrees. And what allows us to say that is the definition of supplementary angles. So first we established from the given info that 1 and 2 were a linear pair. Then we stated the conclusion that angle 1 and 2 are supplementary based on the linear pair theorem. And from that point, we could then go to our proof statement that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is 180 degrees based on the justification of the definition of supplementary angles. So there is not necessarily a set strategy or set way that you can work through every proof. There is a couple pieces that are the same, which are you always begin with your given conclusion or statement and your given justification. And then you always will end with whatever the prove statement is. So the prove statement will be your final conclusion. But between the given and that final prove statement, each step along the way can be different in every single proof. So what you want to remember is that your conclusions on the left are general statements, mathematical in nature, being algebraic in this case, or data that you can use. In the right, you always are using definitions, theorems, postulates, or properties. And as we continue to add more definitions, theorems, postulates, and properties, you'll want to familiarize yourself in the back of your book with a section that is dedicated to the different theorems and postulates and properties along with the glossary for the definitions. So just remember, as you're going through the proofs, you can't take things for granted. So you have to go one step at a time. And each step along the way, you have your conclusion on the left and the justification that corresponds with it on the right.